Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're replacing the factory double dan on this 2005 Malibu Classic. Now, in this video, we're going to show you how to remove the factory radio, then we'll head over to the bench to show you the parts that we'll need for this install, including the radio, dash kit, and wiring harness, then we'll come back here and get everything reinstalled. Let's get started. Now, before we jump into things, this guy needs to come out. It's always a good idea to make sure your discs are out. And uh, once those have been removed, we can get started. Now, the majority of the bezel is actually just held on with clips. I have a little panel tool. Um, the first thing that just needs to pop on out is the key position panel here. Just kind of work on it here. Just like that, just held on with clips. And now let's go ahead and also use that same panel tool and start working this dash bezel loose. Just like so. Now we may want to go ahead and pull our shifter back. Just like that. We can simply just disconnect our power socket to give us the space we need. Now we have either a 932nd or 7 millimeter to remove the three screws up and around the radio. Okay, with those screws removed, go ahead and give it a tug to pull the radio on out. Disconnect your harnesses here. We got our antenna. Just like that. And our main radio wiring harness. Okay. So with that out and out of the way, we're totally done with this guy. We can set him off to the side. Let's head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for the install. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're gonna need for the install. First and foremost is the radio that the customer has chosen to have installed. Um, it's a multimedia Jensen uh, Bluetooth radio. It's the MPR419Q. Now, Jensen's actually uh, did away with a CD drive and instead put a motorized charging pad that comes out. Pretty interesting. We'll show you what that looks like as soon as we get it installed. Um, but to accommodate the single den in the factory location, we do have this multi-dash kit. Um, the, the part number that you need for this vehicle is either the double den dash kit, which is the Metro 95-2001, or if you want a single den like we're doing, it's the Metro 99-2001. So two different styles, we'll link those down in the description for you. Wiring here, depending on what you install, we don't have steering wheel volume controls in this vehicle. And if you did, we'll link that part down in the description. The basic one we need is the Metra or Axis XSVI-2103 nav. This does provide navigation, output wiring, like your backup camera, trigger, illumination, uh, vehicle speed sense, everything that you would need if you're doing a double din. Again, doesn't retain steering wheel volume controls. So if you have steering wheel volume controls, we'll link that specific harness down in the description of the video. Finally, we do need an antenna adapter. This is the Metro 40-GM10. So these are the bare basics that we're installing on the vehicle here today. First thing that we're gonna do is get the wiring harness and the harness that came with our Jensen stereo. Today we're gonna to be soldering. Now, if you don't know how to solder, you can use butt connector or crimp caps. Just don't twist and tape or use wire nuts as it's not appropriate for this automotive application. Okay, so what we've done here is pulled the harness out of the box as well as the harness from our aftermarket radio and we've stripped both ends here. Now, for the most part, you just have to match color for color. Now, it's not always 100% correct, so you always want to check what colors your radio identifies them as. Same with the harness adapter. There are some colors in this that we're not using, like the navigation outputs, uh, such as our vehicle speed sense, parking brake, reverse camera trigger wire. We just don't need those because we're doing a basic single din. Fortunately for you, if you're doing some sort of double din in your vehicle, it provides those. You don't have to look for them elsewhere. It's really nice. So that's why this harness is good for just about any radio install. It does also come pre-pinned for the ASWC1 by Axis. So if you want to pick up that separately, it essentially just plugs right out in there and... Um, you follow the programming instructions, there's no extra wiring, it's really convenient. 
So at this point of time, we've stripped and prepared our ends here. We've already added heat shrink on one side. So when those connections cool, we can actually move the heat shrink up and over those connections after we've soldered them and we can shrink them down with the heat gun. So let's go ahead and start getting everything soldered up. All right, so what we've done here is we went ahead and soldered up everything color for color. In this case, it was color for color. It retains um, RIP or accessory power. Um, so basically the radio stays on until you open the door. It'll keep that feature for sure. Uh, but our parking brake, reverse gear wires, vehicle speed sense, and illumination, we'll just go ahead and cap off on this side. We added an extra um, accessory wire just in case we need it. This, fortunately for us, puts out 10 amps. Um, so it has a built-in relay, which is really convenient. So in case we had another accessory down the road, we just teed in and ran in parallel another red wire. And this is a remote turn on in case we had an amplifier down the road. So we'll throw some butt connectors on that and make sure we get those also insulated. At this point in time, let's move the heat shrink up and over those connections and shrink them down with the heat gun. All right, so what we've done here is essentially we have completed our wiring harness. After shrinking the tubes down, we wrapped it in some tested tape just like the Metro harness came. Um, we put some up connectors, one on our extra accessory that we left out, a remote turn on wire. And since we're not doing stereo controls because we don't have them, the WR wire here, the wired remote 3.5 millimeter, kind of looks like an aux, but it's for steering wheel controls. We just zip tied it all together here. Um, this end plugs into the vehicle, this end will plug into the radio, and uh, this is our smart harness that will just tuck down into the dash. That's it. Uh, we're done here with the wiring harness. Next here, let's talk about our dash kit. Now, this is a multi-kit. The kit that I do recommend specific for this vehicle uh, won't be a multi-kit. It'll actually be the right kit for this vehicle, um, and uh, it's very straightforward. Essentially here, um, regardless if you get our kit or the other kit, you find there's a left and a right side and these clip into the sides here. Okay, so what we've done here is got our dash kit on. Now, um, since we're doing a single bin, we needed the pocket here. Um, the screws came to mount the pocket. We didn't need any of the other tabs because it's again a multi-use type kit. Uh, but again, the one that we'll link in the description for you will specifically be for your vehicle. So you don't have to worry about all the other pieces there. We did break off the tabs that we didn't need. We just need the single one here and the double one on this side. If you're always unsure exactly which tabs to break off, grab the factory radio and compare it side by side. Um, and uh, essentially just mirror what the bracket on the factory radio has. So you can have the same exact mounting locations on your aftermarket kit. One quick note about our harness adapter. Now there are some GM vehicles out here that the pinning on this harness is different. And we found this to be the exact same case uh, for our Malibu. And unfortunately, uh, we had to repin basically everything except for power and ground because they weren't pinned in the right location. So what we're gonna do is link in the description the appropriate harness so you don't have to repin it. We just went ahead and repinned it, which is fine. The way you repin it is you take off these little locks here. They come off the back side. You do it for both sides. And the fancy tool that we're using is a paper clip. You can use an official depinning tool, which is fine, but most people will have one of these lying around. What you'll need to do is essentially inside your harness here, you're gonna go ahead and stick this on in. And I'm just gonna do a pin for just an example here today. We'll stick this in here, push it all the way in, kind of move it around and you'll hear the pin release. And as you can see, it pops on out here in the back. I'll pull out my paper clip and there goes the pin, just like that. And then you'll put it back in the appropriate location. Now when you're ready to reinsert it, you just kind of bend that metal little tab up again, right there. So. It it grabs, slide it on in the right way, and you'll hear it click once it's back in place. Just like that. So that's how you repin these. Once you're done, you can go ahead and put your locks back on. Again, this is if you have to repin your harness. Uh, we repin ours, looking here. We've got our front left, we have our rear right, then we have our front right and our rear left. 
and we just match based on the wiring diagram there. So it goes negative positive, positive negative, negative positive, positive negative for our speaker wires. The ones we didn't need is this red, blue, and yellow with a green stripe. They're just not pinned to anything. Uh, generally, that can be a, an accessory, which we don't have here because it runs off the pink data. We had to put the data in this spot. Um, so basically, the red, blue, and the yellow, green have nowhere to go. So we just pin them there because there's nothing on the other side. We're not connecting into anything. Then on this side here, power and ground were already pinned correctly. So that's what we had to do. Just a quick note in case you have to repin. We'll link the harness that you'll need down in the description so you don't have to repin this because there's two versions of it. Just be aware down the road in case you come up with that problem, your harness isn't pinned right, you can easily pin it. We'll also throw the wiring diagram up on the screen here for you so you know what factory wire goes where and what you need to connect into. So at this point in time, with the radio and wiring harness all prepared, uh, we'll grab our antenna adapter. Let's head to the car and start getting everything reinstalled. Okay, so we're back here in the car. We are ready now to go ahead and get everything reinstalled. Now let's go ahead and grab our wiring harness adapter, just like that. Now we did validate that we got our wiring colors correctly pinned here. Everything is exactly where it needs to go. What we'll do is tuck this just down into the dash here, just to give us as much space as possible. Got our antenna adapter connected. Put, tuck that also back into the dash. Now let's go ahead and grab a radio, get it all plugged in. Just like that. Tuck all this down. Now, your dash kit did come with spacers to pull the dash kit out. If you need those spacers, put them in. When we were doing our test fitting, because this radio is kind of big, uh, we didn't need those spacers. This sat just fine without them. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure everything's working. Welcome back to another episode. Okay, so it all seems to be working great. Let's go ahead and pull the gear shifter back. Let's get this all reconnected. All right, let's do a final test here. Okay, it's all booting up great. Now let's uh, go ahead and test this wireless charging pad. Okay, we can close it. <laughs> there you go, wireless charging, you can set it right there. Okay, so at this point in time, we are done with this install. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. Like we said before, we're gonna list a whole series of parts and information about this install in the description of the video, in case you wanna pick one up for yourself. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe to post great content on the channel all the time, and we'll see you in the next video.